Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, and I am riding solo tonight when it comes to uh, doing this Raw After Mania review after WrestleMania 38. Lots to get into and talk about when it comes to this show. Um, there's some good, there's some bad, and there's even some ugly when it comes to talking about what just went down on Monday Night Raw. And we're going to get into all of that for you. So do me a favor. If this is your first time watching us live on YouTube, hit the like button for us. Also, if you enjoy the content, hit subscribe. Helps us out in the algorithms. And leave me a comment down below if you're watching this after the fact. And with all that being said, let's get into the uh, intro by Monteezy. Let's go. Everything pro wrestling they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinion and the lesson. Yes, everyday pro wrestling they can never be you. Okay, guys. We're about to get into all of this. Um, don't forget guys to, uh, check us out. Uh, if you see Derek in the chat, Derek is feeling a little under the weather. He said he wasn't feeling too hot. So he decided not to come out. I also have a bet happening right now with, uh, Rob. So yeah, things will, uh, eventually have to, to formulate and find a way to get better. So, and it's a close game between UNC and Kansas right now, but let's give some shout outs to, uh, our fellow friends who are in the chat tonight. Um, right now we got E. He's putting on the Z's. Don't worry, we're not going to be in here too long. Yo, besides Co uh, Cody and a few surprises, boring show. Uh, only good part of the show was Cody. The rest of it was mid. I skipped the gym for this and regret that. Hey, you made a choice, brother. You made a choice. Uh, what's going on, B-Boy? Matt Lopez in the house as well. He said, I should have just put on IWTV and watched the All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling they had up after uh, Cody instead of the rest of Raw. BJ said, at least this show uh, will be worth it. <laughs> Chucky said, uh, man, he is he wasn't feeling Raw either. Ray from Respect the, Podcrafts, uh, Respect the Craft Podcast said, you're, what's going on, Ray? Um, Jesus better show up in this chat making Conrad and Derek suffer through this. Only me, brother. I definitely paid for all of this, man. And, oh, uh, my gish. My gish. I don't know, man. I don't know what to say about this show. Um, notes are very minimal, we'll say. Uh, Rob says, this comment section is going to be a doozy tonight. Yo, WTF, Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens is the dark match. Yes. Uh, WWE pissed me off again, Chuck. He said, where's my hammer? Ball pain hammer B guns. What's up, Brandon? He said, I miss Raw tonight. Shrugs. Derek said, What up, EPW family? See, Derek, Derek could have came on here. Derek had the link. <laughs> uh, what's going on, D? Uh, they should have called it Booty Mania. Raw was garbage juice. Uh, get well, Derek. Go Kansas. How dare you, Chucky? Chill, Matt. Conrad ain't got the IWTV sponsorship yet. Y'all can write in and let them know. Hey, hey, they make it happen. I'll make it happen, bro. Uh, this UNC Kansas game, though, yes. And I'm mad that I'm reviewing this right now. And Jesus was at the show. He's at He was at Raw, so he's probably there right now. So, Jesus, this is for you. And everybody, if you want someone to blame for this, blame Jesus. Hashtag blame Jesus. Uh, Derek Bacon, like he got a test today. See? You know. You know. Uh <laughs> Shout out to Gerald in the chat. What's going on, Jay? He said uh, Stone Cold's the greatest. It was a lot of fun to see Stone Cold wrestle. I was not expecting that this weekend. So uh, good times, good times. Uh, let's get into this Raw After Mania, man. Um, please make sure if you guys do, go back and check out our previous reviews for the show. Uh, they will be up, listed up here somewhere once the... Uh, once the opportunity is right, you'll see the iCard pop up, and then you guys should be able to uh, get right into that. Um, going into this show, we got highlights of Mania shown. It was two nights, uh, night one over night two, in my opinion. I can confidently say that today. Uh, when we talk about WrestleMania weekend, to me, the match that stole the weekend for me, it's still them boys versus the top guys. Um, that was probably one of my favorite match of the weekend. But... 
we're talking about WrestleMania. We're talking about WWE's product here. And when it comes to WWE, WrestleMania, it doesn't get any bigger than that. They, they know how to put on a show. They know how to hype you up for it. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, like I said, WWE always knows how to put on a show. And we decide to kick off Raw with the man who made his big return, Cody Rhodes, the EVP who left AEW and went back to WWE. Some would say he went back home. Um, it's very interesting. And I see both sides of the Cody argument at this point of people saying like, oh, it's good to see Cody back. Uh, some people are like, oh, I can't believe he, he left the way he did. Some people aren't feeling that either. I, I get it. I get it. And, uh, it's very difficult. And some people, some people are going to understand that and other people aren't, you know? So Cody's decision was Cody's decision at the end of the day. I'm, I think either way, as a wrestling fan, we win. We needed WWE to go out there and put on a better show. They need Cody. They need other people. They can't build these stars themselves. They've proven it time and time and time again. So you might as well just wait and pick off the person that you want instead of doing all this hot garbage that you've been doing for a while now. That, that's just how it is, man. Uh, we got comments coming in. Uh, how are they not bringing Stone Cold out today? I, they need him every night, bro. Uh, 100% Briscoe's and FTR was awesome. FTR and Briscoe's was fire. Yes, that's going to be on the – when we do our end of the year awards that I need all you to vote on when it's time, that is going to be it. Um, we got fire. Raw was Wanda from In Living Color. <laughs> Jeez Louise. No Bailey, no Asuka, or NXT call-ups. Uh, only the pocket watchers are mad. Yeah, that's a fact. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, so for the beginning of this, Cody Rhodes comes out. He has his full AEW entrance. The whole wrestling has more than one royal family. You have that whole entire entrance. You got Derek's reaction to it. You you know what everybody wants for this, and it's just what it is. Cody comes out. He has the whole – he's coming up through the floor. He's doing the whole gimmick, the whole shebang that he wanted to with this. Cool. It's fine. I like it better than if you had the dashing entrance again or if he was Stardust. You really can't be upset with that. Like I said, WWE knew they wanted this, and they can't screw this up. So we were all interested. What was Cody going to say? Cody comes out with the pyro. He says that it was an easy decision to come back to WWE. Kind of a little paintbrush to some of the AEW fans and what was being said. But what, what do you expect him to say at this point? Uh, they pull up a picture on the Titantron of Dusty Rhodes in Madison Square Garden, September 26, 1977. He says that he cannot put the title around the waist of the American dream, if you will, but he can put it around the waist of the American nightmare. And he's going to do this for himself, his family, and the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. But then he is interrupted by Seth freaking Rollins. Seth Rollins comes out, and he doesn't really say too much. He kind of welcomes Cody back, and I feel like this is going to continue this feud between Cody and Seth. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it, it's okay, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. This is just weird feeling to me. Like, Cody's back in the WWE. I just cannot get over this. Um, during this, he he's interrupted by Seth. Cody, Co all right, so overall looking at this, from a business standpoint, not just me putting my own two cents into this, let's look at it in totality from my perspective. Cody Rhodes is very smart. He's chasing after the title that his father never got. They have a story in place. They have been set on telling main event stories. It's there for Cody. The story is there. Now, he recently talked about an AEW that he backed himself into a corner. I love the promo he cut in AEW about him never going after the championship because he was in management like his father. He did a great job with that. He ended up losing because MJF threw in the towel. MJF then kicks him in, in the nuts, and he's down. He goes out 
And that was part of the major story for this for Cody. Cody is smart and he's learned his lesson because now he's going for the world title. And I think he he had a creative, he backed himself into a corner creatively and he had to fight out. And this time he knows, don't back myself into a corner. So Cody learned some main event tips, I think, while in AEW. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'd like to hear what you guys think of uh, what they should do with uh, Cody here. Uh, when Cody does a good promo, it is a damn good promo. I thought he was on point tonight too, Matt. I got to give it up. This was my favorite part of the show as well. Uh, Cody abandoned his family. Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson dropped their uh, colors like an iced tea video. Come on, E. Come on, E. Orange Cassidy would be a breath of fresh air on Raw, on Raw, Raw. Uh, they botched the elevator and the pyro timing. We don't talk about Stardust. <laughs> Uh, what about the cosmic wasteland? Uh, why was Seth dancing like a Bollywood movie? I, dude, I don't like Seth's gimmick, bro. I, I don't like his music. I don't like his gimmick. Heck of a wrestler. We got to do better for him, in my opinion. Uh, what would be a good idea, but won't happen if Cody won the WWE title at the Great American Bash, the same event his dad created? I wonder if he's gonna win it in the Garden, too, because they kept bringing up MSG, the world's greatest arena, and I'm sure they want to keep ticket sales high for that arena. For uh, what it means to the McMahon family, perhaps, perhaps. But Cody came out. Cody did his thing. That that's who this was all about. This was the Cody show tonight. This was all about this guy. I never thought we would see an image like that again on WWE television. But there it is. We've got it, and I'm interested to see what they end up doing for him. That's it. That's all I got for Cody. He he's he's done better. We'll have to wait and see. Um, if anybody gets any of those, uh, the dark match reportings from Raw, please let me know in the chat. Uh, next up, we have a contenders match here with Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. Um, this was a match. Uh, they picked up the victory after using the same combination move they used at WrestleMania. Rhea Ripley, after the match, appeared to be frustrated with Liv Morgan, and rightfully so. Liv Morgan took the pinfall, and Rhea just got out of a bad tag team, and she feels like she's probably right back in one. Um, she didn't care about that uh, that Catwoman outfit like you guys did yesterday. She wasn't going for it. Um, so she looked frustrated with Liv Morgan. I wonder where this is going. There'll be more on them later. And Sasha Banks and Naomi, it still still feels thrown together a little bit. I saw them do the whole team bad celebration on the uh, YouTube channel. Good for them. I'm happy Sasha finally got her victory, but we got to treat Sasha better. She's one of your bigger stars. And I think um, when we go back and look at this, if Sasha does leave the WWE to get into acting or whatever, uh, it's going to be one of those, like, you made a big mistake just letting her go like that. Uh, because I think they could do so much more. Uh <laughs> Rob said, from undeniable to goddamn desirable. Uh, the next MSG show is in July. Good point. Good point, Matt Lopez. Who's going to be the first to address uh, Cody's comments on Wednesday? It wasn't Shane McMahon. <laughs> I don't know what Tony's going to say. Uh, Cody's little acting class tears is why he got booed on the other show, but they were loving it here. Jericho got some uh, tape for his new gimmick. Uh, Rhea is joining the House of Edge. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I, I think so too, Rob. Uh, Sasha's stuff interrupts Naomi's dancing. I don't get it. Sasha is AEW bound next year. Tokyo says, What's going on, Tokyo? Um, maybe, maybe. I, I thought Sasha would have left beforehand, but it never happened. During this, Kevin Owens is on his way out. Kevin Owens uh gives Steve Austin his props and says that he was injured during the match. So Austin should feel lucky that he beat the greatest of all time. Wham, wham, wham for Kevin Owens. But then he gets interrupted by a Titan trying and it flashes the words Ezekiel. And I'm like, yo, is Ezekiel Jackson back or what's going on here? And out comes Elias. We know it's Elias, but we're not supposed to say that. And I know every Elias fans out here just like. Yeah. Elias comes out. Beard is cut off. I don't even have a picture for you guys because I didn't even want to bring this up. But he cut his beard off and cut his hair down. And he says that he is Elias's little brother, Ezekiel, because the fans are like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Even Kevin Owens acknowledged it. So this is part of the gimmick. Um, 
he says that he's his little brother. He happened to just take over Elias's uh, WWE Twitter account. So whatever, bro. Whatever. So it looks like we're getting a program between Kevin Owens and Elias. Interesting, I guess. I guess the Honky Tonk Man, modern day Honky Tonk Man gimmick wasn't working for them. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. That this is this was weird. I thought it was LA Knight at first. <laughs> LA Knight is Ezekiel Knight. <laughs> uh, what about Brood.0? Ezekiel looking fit though. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely in great shape. They just got to let this dude do something on television, in my opinion. When it comes to him, at least. Um, also, Dominic with uh, Rey Mysterio is out next, and he's facing off against the Miz. I'm not even going to get into this. Miz hits the skull crushing finale. It was over. And then following the match, here comes Veer. Now, we were told Veer was going to make his big debut, but this is how he did it. Veer Mahan comes out and beats down Dominic. Now, I have to give full props to the homie, Matt Lopez. He tagged me in something. And I want to read you the headline for uh, this Fightful article. It was just crazy. I don't. I think Jeremy Lambert did this, is what everyone was saying in the comments. Veer comes hard on Dominic Mysterio, forces him to submit, unloads on Rey Mysterio on Raw. What, bro? Like, why would you even use those terms? You can't, you cannot do that, man. You cannot have that up there. Fightful was tripping for that one. They were really tripping, man. But it's all in good fun when it comes to the pro wrestling stuff. I just was like, man, these boys are wild. Um, Bianca Belair, after that, cuts a promo uh, saying that she hopes Becky Lynch finds herself. So maybe Becky's going to be taking a little time off. And then she goes through the usual. She's the greatest. She's the best. She's the EST of WWE. That's the promo. Like, I understand why everyone in the beginning of this uh, live stream was saying, dude, this is boring. This, this isn't that good. And I'm like, I get it. I hear you. I'm with you. Like, some of this stuff was very plain and basic. We even get an NXT championship match on this show. Um, let me run through the comments here because we got a bunch popping up. Uh, let's see. Big Zeke coming back. I wish Ezekiel Jack. That was my jam, his theme. This here, what you call domination. Uh, Raw was trash, Sean says. What's going on, Sean? Shout out to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Make sure you show him some love. WrestleMania after Raw means nothing. Yeah, they, they've lost the luster, man. Like, I'm kind of mad I'm not watching the basketball game right now. That's saying something. Like, I missed some time out watching that, but I'd rather talk to you guys, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm more upset that I was watching Raw instead of that, that NCAA Finals. Why? Why? Why couldn't this be a better show? Um, Cody beat KO at one point when Owens had Cody down. Uh, he did the Young Bucks pose. Wow. Popo in the house was good. I was thinking Ezekiel Elliott when you told me about this earlier. The F, though, is this. And why is Ezekiel not more concerned with his older brother's apparent death? We all saw Tombstone a month ago. Veer became a meme. AEW uh, have learned into have leaned into it, excuse me, and debuted him a face too early to say. But I think the Fed is uh, fumbling him already. I am shocked no one confronted Bianca. Yeah, I feel like Bianca's eye was jack still too. By the way, like they gotta they gotta give her some time off for that. Becky Becky messed up that Molly go round pretty bad and caught her. Uh, Bianca's promo was the white meat baby after a uh, school special by the numbers. Very true. Let's get into this NXT title match real quick. Braun Breaker versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Now, if you guys are subscribed to the audio versions, I reviewed this NXT stand and deliver show. That match, that review, insert it here. It's the exact same match. They even do the middle turnbuckle spot like I mentioned in that. So if you want to hear about this, you can go right on over there. Check me out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're, we're promoting the hell out of the show tonight. Go show me some love on there. It's the same match, same suplexes. Dolph goes to throw him into it. This time, though, Braun Breaker sees it, stops himself, gets caught with the super kick, still only gets a two count this time. And after that, Braun Breaker uh, hits a big spear out of the corner, 
picks up Ziggler, does the Goldberg slam, one, two, three. Braun Breaker is your winner, and he gets the titles. Grayson Waller kind of trashed him um, for getting another title shot on Twitter, so maybe that's his next feud, Grayson Waller and Braun Breaker. This dude's coming up to the main roster sooner than people think, though. He's not going to be stuck on NXT forever. Um, and he's really good, but did this need to be on Raw? I, I don't know, man. You could have did this on NXT and got some people to watch that. I don't know what they're doing, man. But this was another match. Um, it was there. And this is the first time the NXT Championship changed hands on Monday Night Raw, for those who are curious. Next, something that we feared was coming for months. MVP comes out and introduces Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley is talking about how he knew he could beat Omas. He cuts a babyface promo. And Omas comes out and says, this was a fluke. This was garbage. I know you can't beat me. And MVP decks Lashley with the mic and puts a beat down on him. Gives him the big boot. Omas punishes him as well. This is the Bobby Lashley face turn. Do I believe it? Maybe. His, his mic work seemed better. But that's that's about it, man. I don't, I don't know where we're going with this, but MVP is now aligned with Omas. That's probably better for Omas for his talking and speaking roles. Um, hopefully they can have MVP so put some flavor on him, some of that sasson, and get him over a little bit more than he already is. More than just the height and everything else. We need MVP talking for him, why this man is dominant. And, yeah, so we'll see what happens with this. Liv Morgan's backstage talking to Rhea Ripley. She's like, hey, why, why'd you walk away from me out there? Why are you frustrated with me? Rhea Ripley says she talked to Adam Pierce and they're getting a tag team title shot. Damn it. This is where I have problems, people. This is where I have problems. How did they lose a contenders match earlier? That match was a contenders match, which is if you beat the champs, you get a title shot later. They lost it. And then some way, somehow, they get a title shot, even though they lost. Make it make sense for me, please. I don't get it. I don't get it. What's going on, Ian? How are you, man? I see you in here. Um, Sean said, uh, one point game with 143 left, bro. I need UNC to get the dub. Me and Rob got a bet on some food. So please, someone let me know. Uh, I guess they're trying to get Brian reps with a good hand like Ryan Nemeth brother, but this is this booking is illogical. Uh, this, this crowd sucked tonight. Yeah, the crowd was very weird. Lashley's mic skills have been good since Impact. The Hurt Business was handled. Uh, Nightmare Collective bad. Facts. Uh, Rhea is going to Molly Wap live next week when they lose. Bad booking from Stupid Creative. The comments are on fire tonight. We we get another like match that wasn't a match. We have Zelina Vega and Carmella. They have a segment leading to them getting into a fight with each other. I'm not getting into all of this, and it ends with Carmella making out with Corey Graves. Why? F you. That's why. I don't even know what to say. Like I don't understand why WWE decides to to do stuff like this. It was just a a waste of time. I felt like you know. Just, I, I don't know, I feel like they're backstage and they're just having a laugh at our expense. Whatever. Um, we go backstage. The Usos are having talking about their match with Austin Theory, and they're kind of down on him, but they're getting him hyped up a little bit, and they seem happy about it, which is the next match. RK Bro and Finn Balor versus the Usos and Austin Theory. At this point in my life, I don't know how I can – like be forced to care about Finn Balor anymore. This dude is the United States champion. He wasn't on WrestleMania. And tonight he got pinned by Austin Theory. Give Austin Theory the U.S. title if that's what you want to do, bro. What don't you see in Finn Balor beats me. The dude looks like a million bucks. Give this guy a chance, man. I don't get it, man. I don't get it, dude. Ugh. Oh, man. Uh-oh. People are uh, giving me the updates. I, I don't I don't get it, dude. Oh, they're getting married this weekend. Love, guys. Love. Yeah, cool. I thought he was going to propose or something to her, but maybe that's already happened. I don't know their relationship status. Like I said, I try to stay out of that stuff. Um, Austin Theory beat Finn Balor, bro. I want better for Finn. He should be in the main event picture at this point. 
with the roster that they have, he should be in the main event picture. And give me better for Ricochet. I know he wasn't on this show tonight, but he deserves better too. I'm not saying the dude's world champ tomorrow, but give him something to do. What? This is why I don't review Raw, man, because I would be complaining. And it, you guys know I used to be worse than this. Like, I would just come on here and basically yell into a microphone every single flipping week. And I, I just don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. So good for them. RK Bro and Finn Balor lose to Usos and Austin Theory. Next, uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawk Kansas up with 4.6 seconds left. Dear Lord. <sighs> Come on, UNC. I need you here. Uh, Finn can keep taking the money or he can go somewhere and be happy. He ain't getting any younger. He needs the bread too then, though, you know? Um, Moving moving on, Edge comes out, introduces Damian Priest. I saw Twitter going in. I saw people saying when you order the Wish version of House of Black. I saw people say when you order the Wish version of The Brew 2.0. Wrestling fans, chill out, bro. <laughs> Edge introduces Damian Priest. AJ Styles comes out looking ready for a fight, but instead he gets caught with this, like, it, it was supposed to be a double-team move where the leg sweep happens into the spear. It looked like dog shit. I'm not going to front to you guys. Like, it didn't look good. They, they mistimed this pretty badly. And Edge and Damian Priest take him out. It's going to be interesting to see what this faction becomes, though, and uh, what they're going to end up doing with this. But it looks like Priest is now going to be following Edge in his footsteps. And I'm, I'm calling this like Ministry Edge because I feel like he's Ministry Taker at this point, uh, the PG version of it. And he's just, and Damian Priest is what Edge used to be in the ministry. We're there. Street Profits versus Alpha Academy starts off with some rocky BS. They end up getting into a fight. Adam Pierce comes out and says, Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've seen a lot of uh, tornado tag matches on other channels, so we're doing that tonight. No DQ, no countouts, tornado tag. They end up winning the match. Chad Gable gets frog splashed through a table. Why do I even need to explain this to you guys? You would know the result as soon as I brought it up because we've seen these matches week in, week out. Week in, week out. I, I just don't know, man. Uh, I hear that nobody reviews Raw because it's garbage. People review Raw because it's garbage. Uh, Rob, you should be on the show then and stop slacking. Facts, Rob. Listen, I can't say nothing to the man right now because I'm pretty sure that I just lost a bet to him <laughs> and I'm about to owe him some bread. Um, next week, here's what we got lined up for Raw. AJ Styles versus Damian Priest. Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. And Rey Mysterio versus Veer Mahan. Brother, we got three hours of this show. Three hours is still way too long. Way too long, and we cannot have this. Roman Reigns comes out for the last segment of the night. That, hence why I was a little bit late, because I'm watching on Hulu. It's a little bit behind. R Roman Reigns basically had me sitting there wondering if he was going to say something, and he said, shit. He said nothing. I can't tell if he's injured. It looks like it when he's raising his arms. He looks like he's in pain. So I don't know if he's hurt, but it seems like they're trying to buy time because he said nothing different and said that he will address us on SmackDown. What? <laughs> what the hell was he booked on tonight for? They said nothing. Yeah, BJ said it perfectly here. Veer will come and unload again. <laughs> Uh, ain't no ain't no reason to watch next week's Raw. Uh, the last segment was just an ad for SmackDown. Truth. Truth. Um, so basically, they're telling you to watch on Friday, man. Raw is making me not want to see this live. B-Boy, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you, bro. I couldn't tell you the last time I bought tickets to a WWE event. And they've come here several times, and I just choose not to go. But I'm going to take this opportunity to shill some of the other stuff we're doing. I'm going to end this early because I thought this show was going to be so much better than it was. And I'm disappointed in all of the undercard stuff, which has been the usual problem for the last 10 to 15 years, I would say, with this company. Guys, do me a favor. If you guys want a cool shirt like this, you can go to tpublic.com. Go into the link down below, the uh, drum.io link, and find yourself your favorite wrestling shirt on there. And you guys can order one. It helps support the Everything Pro Wrestling brand, and you get something for it. So please make sure you guys get yourselves a shirt. Send it to me on Twitter at EPW Show. That's for all the socials at EPW Show. 
and I will uh, make sure to retweet you and show you guys some love. WWE's got a pay-per-view in Binghamton, New York, April 24th. No, thank you. Uh, I'm good with just catching the news on YouTube and Twitter still. They got me for Mania. It was worth it, but back to the standard-ish. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you on that, BJ. This is not going to be a weekly thing. They confirmed that to me tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for that. Dynamite. We got Dynamite live review. Those I always enjoy doing. We got that coming up this Wednesday. I got the graphics for it. I'm probably going to make that tonight and have it all set up for you guys. Um, hopefully, Derek will be back live for that one with us. If not, you know, I'll be here. Same bat time, same bat channel, everything pro wrestling. We are going to uh, be out. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us all Mania weekend. Like, without you guys, none of this works. Uh, and I saw BJ just put up, man, have a good night, man. Get some well rest. Catch up with you tomorrow on Wednesday about the show. Let me know, bro. BJ summed it up. Simon Miller usually watches Raw for me. Raw review, thumbs down. FTR and the Bucks for the AAA and ROH titles will be nice. Can't wait for Wednesday. For sure, guys. Um, for the Everything Pro Wrestling crew, thank you guys for your support this Mania weekend. We are out. Can't wait to catch you on Wednesday. One.